much, Dr. Hirsch. That was a wonderful presentation that absolutely covered the full extent of what we've been dealing with for decades. And I think about uh, all us with the gray hair now. We have a whole new generation that's come before that's fighting to see this lab cleaned up. And I don't know, uh, I can't take too much credit for being doing that for close to 20 years. You know, that, that's a sad thing, not a positive thing. I've got about three years left before I'm termed out, and it's on my bucket list. We've got to take care of this site and see that it's cleaned up so that it is no longer polluting and impacting people. <laughs> So I'm supposed to give a little bit of a history of what Ventura County has done and then uh, before we introduce our next speaker. Um, I was uh, involved very much in trying to preserve Amundsen Ranch and that was uh, back in 2002 and that's the beautiful thousands of acres that we were able to protect uh, forever as a state park. And one of the reasons we were able to be successful is despite um, all the staff telling us that um, there is no pollution on site. Uh, we were able to get a test done. The county gave in, and this before I was on the Board of Supervisors, and tested a well on Amundsen Ranch and found perchlorate in it. And once I got onto the Board of Supervisors, I was able to get a requirement in place that any project within two miles of Santa Susana Field Lab in, in the unincorporated area of Ventura County they would re be required to check for perchlorate and TCE and other contaminants so that we know from the, from the beginning that we're not going to be developing in an area of contamination, nor are we going to be using the well water, for example, for landscaping, which was something they were going to do with Amundsen Ranch. Uh, Supervisor Huber, who uh, welcomed us here this evening, uh, he and I both appealed to the Los Angeles Regional Water Quality Control Board uh, when they were looking at perchlorate in uh, the Simi Valley well uh, that Professor Hirsch mentioned. Very concerned about the perchlorate and the potential migration pathways from Santa Susana Field Lab. Even though, like you say, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, right, um, to know where that per perchlorate's coming from. It's in the Simi wells, it's in Amundsen wells, um, and we're also seeing it coming out whenever there are storm. And it's also a, a way to tell where a plume is going by looking where the TCE and per perchlorate it has, and it has expanded off site. I've had uh, Boeing representatives in my office look at me in the eye and say they've never had contamination go off site. And whenever we have storms, we see that happen. Uh, when Brandis Bardeen was found to have contaminants on their property, Boeing bought it. And then they can say, see, we don't have contamination off site. We were able to, uh, as a board of supervisors, make sure our objections were heard when there was proposals by NASA to dispose of their Santa Susana Field Lab property before it was cleaned up. In 2009, they were trying to uh, put it up for sale, still contaminated. Uh, 2012, uh, they enticed the Santa Inez Shumash ba a Band of Shumash Indians uh, to have interest in per taking over the NASA property. Again, contaminated property. And have no problem with it becoming a park. It's been discussed perhaps as a national park or a historic site. But first and foremost, we must clean it. And that has become the Board of Supervisors' position. You know, there are very highly contaminated properties out there that are historic landmarks. Um, I don't know why that becomes uh, something that's the public good, because it really needs to be cleaned first. But you look at, for example, the US nuclear weapons site at Hanford, where there is more than 56 million gallons of radioactive waste that the government still spends more than a billion dollars a year to maintain and clean up. This highly contaminated federal land um, is actually being looked at now as a major uh, national historic site. And uh, I am so concerned that when there is discussions, for example, they talk about preserving the test stands, the rocket test stands, 
well, go ahead and preserve them, but first clean it up underneath it, then you put them back. <laughs> and I, we've seen this over and over again, with ways to get around it. The Board of Supervisors separate readings each time. We have uh, written letters and all the EIRs, the EISs that are coming out on the cleanup of Santa Susana Field Lab, uh, ones for uh, both NASA, DOE, and um, DTSCs. And in each case, making that same point, um, making sure that they clean up to the AOC and making sure that it's cleaned to background level so it's not polluted anymore and we don't have to have the threats anymore. Our Board of Supervisors has also taken a position to join with the City of Los Angeles who is looking at filing a lawsuit over the environmental documents that have been put together by NASA and DOE uh, for the cleanup of Santa Susana Field Lab because as Dr. Hirsch had pointed out, they are grossly insufficient. Um, I was very disturbed at the NASA workshop when they made a presentation showing basically NASA putting up uh, information to the public at their workshop that there is no difference how much contamination they leave on site. The SEIS, it says, found no discernible differences to health and safety across the action alternatives. And of course those alternatives is leave 90% in or remove it. And they're saying it doesn't make any difference to the public health. And that kind of information is false and it's obfuscating. When we looked at the Woolsey fire that came across that land, um, we found 57 exceedances of, of contaminants into the stormwater. And we wanted to make sure in our after action report of the Woolsey fire that we noted that there was actually contamination as a result of the fire. And why that is is because the stormwater equipment that was supposed to retain it was melted in the fire. And this polluted water went out. But each time, the Los Angeles Regional Water Quality Control Board staff made sure to point out that there's no health impact. And I just have to say, there's this thing called cumulative impacts. And the more contaminants that we put into our waters and into our air, the more impact it is going to be on the health of the public. And so uh, we don't need to have these um, staffs and, and reports from agencies that give us information that we're safe. And you know what, it reminds me so much after the uh, major fires, Governor Brown at the time, right, was governor, he came down uh, and at a press conference uh, when he was touring the damage uh, from the fire, he said, this should be a wake up, everyone. This has to be a wake up call about the need to clean up SSFL and that he also pointed out he was skeptical of assurances denying the risk to the public. He said something like, uh, I remember listening and I just thought it was so right on. He says, I'm never mollified when a government agency tries to assure me that there's nothing to worry about. And of course, um, they were putting out that information just days after the fire that the smoke is okay, even before they had their test results. As I was saying, you know, it is no um, feather in anyone's cap to say I've been fighting this for 20 years, but God bless. Dr. Hirsch, really, I mean, Dr. has put this fight and getting the truth out there, uh, particularly when there are those that are trying to um, give out misinformation. It happened on our watch, but because it is still polluted, every newly elected official, it's on your watch too, because while it happened over 60 years ago, that contamination is still there, it's not dissipating, and it's still impacting the health of people. And so all of us, it's on all of us to make sure that we can do everything we can in getting the word out, but putting the pressure on Boeing, NASA, DOE. Uh, we need to make sure the site gets cleaned up. I've got three years, I want it done by then. Thank you very much. Jerry.